Hi everybody! So now it is time for part six of the Wuppercal. It's going so great, so much fun to see all your cardigans in the making. Today is a very fun day because we are going to be joining our sleeves and the sides here. So now it's like finally taking form of a sweater. Uh, before we uh, get into it, today is like a it's, a, it's a short part, there's not much crocheting. Uh, yeah, and we're going to do the ripping on the sleeves as well, okay? So I just want to show you, because everybody's worried that it's too small and the sleeves are too short. Um, so when I put this on here now, as you can see, the sleeves really, like, this is um, this is going to be good here now. And the, it, it's, it, it comes together here with a little ripping here as well. And then we're going to add the front panels. I um, just wanted to show you that it does grow in slouchy blocking. So this is the same size as my gray one. Whoop. And obviously we'll be doing the ribbing on the bottom as well, but just to show you, if I put it here at the same spot, that it is also going to grow a bit when you slouchy block it, you see? And if you do not, then this is uh, the length that you will have. But like, for example, this one here, black one that I made for Michael. So this one is not slouchy blocked. So this is basically just the same size as that one. I just blocked this one flat. And this is again, the long sleeves, longer sleeves, which are way too long for me. I'm 166, uh, but it's still, you know, it's not short or anything. Uh, and just to put the sleeve thing to rest, because a lot of you I see are making longer sleeves, which is fine, you can do that. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, and you're not listening to me when I say that the sleeves are purposely short because, and I will show you now why, this is the first one that I made. <laughs> because they do grow and it's the loose gauge. And once you wear it, they just get longer. So this one here is in the pattern, you're supposed to do th 24 rows for the short. 28 for the long and this here is 32 and you know this is this is you know but it, it, it's uh, obviously no good <laughs> so before you go ahead and 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 keep making longer and longer sleeves do remember the the, fl the floppy first one that i made this one here is the same yarn made at the same time been used as well this is 24 the shorter sleeves which fit me quite nicely and they're not short at all so um please believe me when i tell you that the sleeves are supposed to be short because both they start here at uh not at the they don't go up to the the armpit and uh, they also grow longer uh, but today after me lecturing you <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be doing this here, the ripping on the sleeve and joining, and now it's taking form and it's so nice. Uh, and it's a short bit today, not too much crocheting, just some um, lovely finishing touches. So let's go and let's join up those sleeves, the short sleeves. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Okay, hi again. So we go now for part six, which is just very quick actually today because we've been going at a rather fast pace. <laughs> so today we're going to do the ripping for the sleeves and joining up the sleeves and down the sides, okay? Before we get to that, you've been asking about gauge and about measurements and, you know, just all kinds of things. So I did a little drawing the other night uh, with all the sizes, which I will add to the pattern. But just to show you, now that you have finished part five, here are the approximate measurements for what you should have in the what we're doing the large oops the large short version so the sleeve here at the beginning should be 35 centimeters for the large that's 30 for the for the medium and the length of the sleeve is 35 centimeters for the the short and 40 for the long and at the top it should be 40 centimeters for this large that's uh, 35 for the medium and so here the measurements are, it's 35 centimeters here, the front part, 40 the sleeve and 35 for the back part. Uh, these panels here, the front panels are 15 centimeters each, um, sort of long because, you know, we're working it like this, right? And then when you finish the back, the total of the back is 60 centimeters. So that's 15 and then 30 back and then another 15. 
and then obviously the rest is the same as the beginning so this here is um a little drawing i will be adding this to the pattern for all the sizes i've already put these pics up on my facebook group where we're hosting the call so you could check that out or just screenshot shoot this here okay just wanted to to reassure you guys because obviously if you have a little bit different gauge or whatever then uh, this is just good to have as well okay uh, and now what we are going to do is we're going to start with the ribbing for the sleeve and now we use a six millimeter, millimeter hook so we're going down one size if you have eight for the body you will use seven etc i was using seven so we go now down to six okay so at the end of the second sleeve in part five i told you do not break your yarn this is getting huge here too <laughs> it's on my little desk uh, oh no, this is all mm, tangled. Well, we'll just power through. Uh, so we now work the ripping uh, in just straight from here where we finished our last row of the sleeve. We were here on the right side. Yeah, that's another question I've been getting. If you're left-handed, just go opposite to me, obviously, always. I'm on the right side, you would be on the left side. And so now that we're going to work the ripping all over the end of this last row here and it's a five stitch ribbing i don't know if you've done ribbing before it's just a basic single crochet ribbing i am going to show you we're doing it together so now we had finished here at the end of the last row of the sleeve and now i'm going to chain up six stitches six chains and you don't have to do this so so loose as before just normal one two three four five and six okay eight two three four five six and now we're going to work back into those um chains single crochet stitches we're going to skip the first stitch here we always skip the one that's up on the loop and then we skip the first one we go into the second one and we work one single crochet here and one into each chain back so that is a total of five single crochet stitches here and now we are back at the end here of the sleeve right uh, where, where we are more at the sleeve and now we're going to work two slip stitches one into each of the next two stitches uh, we have these uh, half double crochets here so i'm going to be working my ripping into both stitches here and i'm just going to leave the third stitch okay so now after we finish the five single crochets we're going to do two slip stitches stitches la 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 two slip stitches <laughs> one into each of the two next stitches here on the sleeve right okay so we go one and two and turn <laughs> feels like i'm doing like an exercising video now one, two, turn or dancing. Uh, okay, stay on point now. <laughs> and we turn, okay? And now when we go back and work back, we're going to skip those two slip stitches here and go into the ripping is all just single crochet stitches, back loop only. So now I'm just going to count here one and two, and I'm going to go into the third. Okay, is it clear? We're skipping the slip stitches and we just go into the single crochet here in the back loop. And we work five single crochet stitches all into the back loop two whoop do, 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 do. three four and five and then we chain one and that's just a turning chain we're not going to be working into that okay so that was row two here of the ribbing and now we turn again and go back up to the cuff of the sleeve and we're going to skip that chain that we did that was just a turning chain so you skip this one here and we go into the next single crochet always into the back loops back and forth so one two three four and five this is why i say it's a five stitch ribbing because we're always doing the five single crochets back and forth and now i'm going to see here if i pull it in here i can see this one opens up and that means that i've already slip stitched into that one so i'm going to go into the next one and do two slip stitches one and two 
So we have fastened the ripping to the cuff of the sleeve with the slip stitches and then we turn and again we skip the two slip stitches and go into the back loop of the first single crochet and work five single crochets. This is very easy. This is actually, we're going to get to this then, we're going to do the ripping on the bottom of the sweater. That is part seven. And then up all the, and these are my favorite parts, like the ribbing is on the bottom and up the, the, the listing and the, over the neckline and that, oh, it's so much fun. Uh, <laughs> okay, now we're off, are back here at the end. So this would be, if we count the stitches, it's one, two, three, four, this would be five here, right? Just to be two, what have I done? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're going into five. One, two, one. Two, three, yeah, we've done four and now we're going into five. So I chain and I turn. Yeah, so we're doing five, five. Yeah, so the odd number rows are going uh, towards the sleeve to the cuff and the even numbers are going out. Yeah, okay, so this is five here now. And then I just skip the chain again and I do five single crochets all into the back loop. This is great to know how to do these rippings because it's great for all kinds of things, cuffs for hats and beanies and, and, and um, mittens, what have you. Okay, and now I'm back up here at the cuff and if I just pull at it, I'll see, I already worked into this one here, so I go into the next, into both stitches here of the, of the half double crochet, just leaving the, the third stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch two to fasten the ribbing to the cuff and then I turn, skip the two slip stitches. One and two, go into the first single crochet, back loop only, and one into each five single crochet. So this is very easy and nice. Love working the ribbings. It's so much fun. Chain one and turn. And we go back up to the cuff, skip the slip, the, the chain, oops, and work into the back loop of the first single crochet. One, two, three, four and five. You should count these always because the last one here is a bit small sometimes. So sometimes you will miss that one. So just better to always count. It's just up to five. So, And then we've done the five here. Now we're at the cuff again. So I'm going to fasten with my two slip stitches. You see how easy and fun this is. Two slip stitches to fasten and I turn. No, no chain here at the turning from the cuff and then Skip the two slip stitches into the back loop of the first single crochet. And we do five single crochets. So this is very, very, very easy. And you just continue like this the whole way over the cuff of the sleeve, always the same. Just repeating these rows here. What do I say in the pattern? Do, 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 do. Um, yeah. So in um, you're repeating rows two and three always, and it is a total of 32 rows for the medium and 36 for the large, which we are doing here now. And we finish with the last repeat of a row two, but I'm going to show you that once I get to the other side, okay? So I'm going to continue just the same way, always uh, repeating rows two and three. And then... Uh, I'll show you how we finish it off here at the end and do not cut your yarn at the end until you talk to me. <laughs> okay, so ribbing all the way whoop, and then I'll see you here on the flip side. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I'm back. We're finishing the sleeve ribbing here. Actually, I, uh, I said it was 36 rows total, but I was counting mine now. And it's 38 for the large and 34 for the medium. Uh, this is actually a mistake in the pattern. I fixed it now and I will put it in the updated version after the cal ends. But basically it's just one, uh, one row here on the cuff for each stitch you have on when you finish the sleeve. So when we finish the sleeve, I had here 38 stitches. So I will do 38 rows of the ribbing. Uh, I have here done 36. So now we're going to just finish it and repeat once more. Now we're going to repeat row three, which is going up to the cuff and then 30, um, row two going out and that will be the 38th, okay? I just have two left here. And in the end, just to show you here, uh, 
it you can sort of miss it maybe here is the last half double crochet stitch you can see because we have the extra loop here and then the last stitch goes into the the second chain here okay so i am going to work down now again i did my one chain here at the end at the top and i do five single crochets back this here would be row 37 then okay and five and then i just do my two slip stitches here first one here into the last half double crochet right and the second slip stitch here into the second chain like so and then we turn and we skip the two slip stitches as always and we finish with row 38 and do five single crochets one whoops do, 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 do. two three four and five okay and i'm just going to show you how it looks here so this is what it looks like now the cuff of the sleeve this adds uh five centimeters the the ribbing here with the five stitches and so this is what it looks like now and uh what was i going to say yeah so when you're counting the 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 ribbing you just sort of count because what, what we're doing we're always just going into the back loop so we're kind of forming this ridges here so you just count always like here on the first ridge that's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen six down out two 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 four four whoops six out three two 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 six out thirty eight okay so that's done now and next up is the joining and let's just get right into that the sewing together so we finish the ribbing and this is a very satisfying uh, bit because you're joining together now the sleeves and the sides of the cardigan so you kind of see it all come together now and what we are going to do so my grandmother my great grandmother and my grandmother taught me well, and I should not long use long, um, long uh, tails when I'm sewing together. But it, it really is just so much easier just to use a really long tail here. <laughs> so I am cheating. I know they will forgive me looking down from heaven because uh, it's all good. I'm gonna take care that it it will look good. So just um, I'm leaving here a lot of tail actually. Maybe I should measure it and tell you. What we're going to be needing, if I find my measuring tape, uh, you can obviously, and maybe you should do a shorter tail, but then you have to join it, and it's just no fun, is it? So I have here now 150 centimeters plus what 50, I have like two meters. That's probably too much, but I will then see at the end. Maybe I can add that as well. How much you need? I have another hundred. No, how much is this here? This is great slow TV here. <laughs> Me measuring the end. What is it? 150. And then I have like 100 more. So I have like 250 centimeters, which is probably way too long. But we'll see at the end how much I have left. And then you could do that exactly. So. Uh, before I get to that, actually, I'm going to weave in some ends because I don't really like to do that afterwards. I just want to have that all finished. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you with the joining. Okay. Okay. Whoops. It's, it's crooked here. Right. So on we go with the joining. Um, this is what it looks like now, the sleeve. We have the cuff here. I have my long tail here and I just pulled it through the last loop and just fasten it there and we weaved in on my tail so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the sleeve and we're just going to fold it together here at the cuff and we will be working we will be sewing together here all this side of the sleeve here up to the armpit okay i'm gonna fold it here and see if i can show you so here we go here we have the sleeve we're going to be sewing together this here up to the armpit it's nice to have the still the the uh, stitch markers we put here in at each side of the sleeve 
So we show we see the first stitches here at the uh, on the sides, and then we're going to sew all down here to the uh, bottom of the cardigan. Okay. So before we start doing this, I want to tell you that you know this is sewing together. This is um, what can I say? I mean. I have a technique of doing this and I think it's quite nice, but it is joining and sewing. So it is, you know, not, it is a join, a join is a join. So, you know, we do it the best we can and it's on the bottom of the sleeve and I think it's quite nice, but you know, uh, what I like to use for this, when I'm using this bulky yarn are these big, big ass <laughs> plastic uh, darning needles. And it's really nice, the ones that have like a bit of a whoop here on the end. Whoop uh, These are very comfortable to use, I feel. So I have my long tail and all the guilt that comes with that. <laughs> Generational guilt. And I'm just going to really uh, pull that a bit here so that it's not way too long. And I'm using it then, then so it's like doubled here, right? Now, it, so the important part here when we're sewing together the sleeve is to have it, uh, obviously the stitches, the rows on both sides lining up. I will not usually do this when I'm just doing this for myself, but I think it would be a nice, uh, should, you know, it's good to put in stitch markers just to be sure that you're doing it right. Uh, so when you go up here to the and uh, upper end of the sleeve, the cuff is here, and we're going here up until the sort of the, what is this called, the armpit. So here you can see, this is the last row here of what we did on the back and the front. And you can see this here, we have the little stitch marker here. So this here is the first row of the sleeve. So I'm going to put a stitch marker here into this first row here, and I'm gonna look on the other side. And you see this row here goes whoop like this, and then this is the first row of the sleeve. So I'm just gonna put a stitch marker here into this first row, sort of holding it together. So I know that these are the last stitches that I'm gonna be doing. And then let's count what do we say, like 10 rows. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is here, 10, that will be like on the middle of the sleeve. And fasten that together with the other side so that we know. So we go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that is here. So and you, as as you can see, I'm just counting on the the sort of the, the what looks like a um, braid here, you know. Okay, so I fasten these together, and then I have in the tenth, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stitch marker on this side. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What? Huh? Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I did it wrong. Nine. Okay, one more here. Whoopa. 10, this one here. Okay. So now I fastened it here together. So tell it in, no, no. Two, four, six, out of tea. And this one is down here. Two, four, six, out of tea. Okay. And I'm just going to count here until the cuff just to make sure. Get the two, four, six, out of tea. Twelve. And then the cuff. And here I have 12, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 12, and then the cuff, okay? So this is all lined up here. You could put another one here at the end into the first sort of... I mean, that's a bit redundant, but yeah, let's just do it extra carefully. Into the last here sort of braid. Okay, so now we won't make any mistakes when we're sewing it together. So when we start here from the cuff, we have our, woo, it's going off the table. <laughs> I'm gonna move a bit like so. Okay, so here we start at the cuff and we have our tail here at this end. So I am just going to, and we have here now one, two, three, four, five stitches. And on the other side, do, 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 do. So we're just going to go here. I will start by going into it, type three, four, five, and then sort of into the sixth one here on this side and pull my yarn through. 
And if you're using wool or lope and you are heeding, heeding, my, my, heeding my horrible advice of having a long tail, do take care when you're like taking it through because it should, it would wear a bit, but you know. And now I'm going to join by going into the back loop of the last uh, row here we did so that I'm leaving this ridge here intact, okay? And I just go into the, the, the other loop on the other on the other side of the cuff and just we just do um what is this called um just a running stitch okay and then i go into the next one back loop here and into this one here and then three two three two three okay <laughs> Should we call this the running guilt stitch? <laughs> and again into the back loop. I always like when I'm sewing things together like this. Um, sometimes you can have a technique where you do it from the wrong side and, and it doesn't show. But I feel it's better to do it from the outside, from the like the the right side, the front side of the fabric, because there you can really control it better how it looks. You know, you see what is happening on the outside. Okay, like so, you see, just be like this. And now you don't want to do this too tightly because we are not doing a tight, tight gauge. So just, you know, let them lie sort of naturally. No, don't tuck at them too much, just whoops, sort of like. And now we have finished the last stitch here on this one, and I'm going to do two stitches more here. This is sort of into the 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 last row of the sleeve here. And now I'm going into the two chains here and the consequent stitch on the other side. Okay. And <laughs> do one more here and then I'm going to show you my little trick for joining. So we go here just into the next two and now we're up to our first sort of braid there. Am I close enough? Are you seeing this? Maybe I should um, actually go just do it like this. Okay so now what I do to try and keep it consistent is sewing together. And again, I mean, there are many techniques to do this. And this is just the way I do it. Maybe you have a better way of it. And that is fine. You can do it as you like. But what I do is that I try to sort of fake these stitches that they continue. So I do sort of like an invisible join thing over here. Okay. So where I now go into, I'm here on the other side, okay, so I'm going to go into here and come up in the middle of this last stitch here. You see the last sort of loop here. Okay, on the side that is closer to me. And then I'm going to do like an invisible join into the same row here on the other side. So the invisible join is just you go under both these here stitches and you go through. And then you go back inside of the one that we came up of. And then I just come up again into the next one, in the middle of the next one, you see? And what you need to do is, because I'm not doing any extra stitches in between, you just have to take care to not do this too tightly. Okay, and so when you pull at it here now, you see this just looks like another loop as these here, but we need to tighten it. Let's be close here, like so, you see? And just tighten it so it has the same sort of length as the other stitches here. And take care not to tighten it too much here in between because there's a bit here in between where we get up and we don't want it to be like, um, how do you say, crumpled. So like we don't want it to be like, you know, like tight. <laughs> Okay, now I'm here back in the middle here of this stitch and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just go under the two strands here of the loop here on the other side. It is just wonderful to do this with camera in the middle. I just, I must say, it's just amazing. 
<laughs> okay, I'm coming here on the other side to see, and now I'm going to go back here, hat hat down into the stitch that I came up to, and I'm gonna bring my needle up here in the middle of the next stitch. Hmm? And we pull. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna, can you, <laughs> long tail and camera in between. I feel like I'm being punished for the long tail. I should be punished. <laughs> okay, and again here, you see, just pull at it until it's, and you know, these, um, this bit here, what we're doing, like I said, it's a joining, so it's never gonna be 100% perfect, but I do feel, well, if you have watched my stuff before, I love meticulous uh, finishing. So at the same time as I will be, you know, know that nothing is perfect in this world, I do think that it really uh, makes a difference to take your time with these things and do them as neatly as you want, so as you can, so that you get the best finish possible, you know? So sort of like, um, uh, acceptance, but do your best <laughs> combo. <laughs> so, but you see, this looks quite nice because it just looks like a continuance of the rows. Okay. So just when you tighten here, just tighten it to the point where you feel that this stitch here, this faux stitch we did for the joining is sort of the same length as the other ones around it. Right. And I'm going to show you maybe just a couple more and then I'm going to do it without a camera in between me and the fabric, if that's okay. Again, I came up here in the middle bit of this next stitch here of the next braids. This is just for each row. Right. And I find the next row here on this one. We did this one, so I'm going here. Find the last stitch. I go under both strands like this. Pull the yarn through. Take care to do this a bit delicately because we don't want to wear out our wool. And then I go back down here on the other side where I brought the yarn up the first time. And I find the next row here. And see, here it's a bit sort of twisted, so I just have to pull at it to see where it is. Yeah. Okay, I come up here, whoop, in the middle bit here. And now we pull through. And and we take care to do it in a way up until like so. So we have maybe a bit more. You see now my stitches are pretty even here. Right, this stitch is the same so no, length as the other ones. Right, so this is the way it's supposed to look here, the joining. Oops, a bit more. <laughs> Meticulous much. We'll see the borderline. This is how it's supposed to look. And then just always take care to go into, you're always doing the um, corresponding row on both sides, but with your stitch markers in place, this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, continue this same way. Uh, I mean, I've showed you. I should. I should. I can show you one more time, and then I, I continue with the with Seinfeld and not the the camera in between. <laughs> um, just here now. We're on this one here, and I find we already did this. So, so we just go to the next one. I find the last stitch here on the end of the fabric. Go under both strands of that loop with the running guilt <laughs> stitch <laughs> and I go back inside of the stitch here on the other side and I bring my needle up and that's the nice bit about having a needle that does this ugh, that it really just comes up so nicely right I come up, up here in the middle of the next row and stitch and I pull through gently with my wool yarn and before I continue, I want to tuck at it and make it look as good as possible here. And then I continue. Okay. So, you know, it is a join. A join is a join. You know, nothing's perfect. Alas. <laughs> but I think it's, uh, I think it's quite neat. And again, I mean, this will be uh, underneath your arm. And as long as you're not just like flailing and flopping your arms up all the time, you're wearing the sweater. Uh, like, what do you call these things at the car wash? Like the... <laughs> okay, I'm getting off topic. Uh, this is how you do it. Continue. Uh, don't be flapping your arms. But even if you flap your arms, I mean, this is quite nice. You'll be flapping. Go on, flap. 
flap, flap away with your whoop on. I mean, this is nice finishing, isn't it? Mm, I love nice finishing, isn't it? Just ah, uh, mm, all the little things in life that make you happy. Uh, so just take your time with this. You know, don't do it in a hurry. We want to do this nice and neat. Um, what sign fold or what have you, and I will get back to you. Just continue all the way up the sleeve, and I will check back in with you before we get here to the end of the sleeve and how we continue down the side. Okay, flipping and flapping with all the guilt. <laughs> okay, on we go with the joining. Uh, so I've gone all the way up almost here just to show you how it looks. So, I mean, you can see there's a join, but it's rather neat when you do it like this then. And also you just see uh, you're keeping... Um, taking care that the lines match, that the that the um, rows match, right? So, you know, I think it's flip worthy, flap, flap worthy. <laughs> so this is where we're at now. And now I'm here at almost at the end of the sleeve. Here are my is my stitch marker marking the last rows here of the sleeve. I'm just going to take that out because I don't really need that anymore and I am coming up here out of the second to last row of the sleeve do the last couple of rows there of joining of the sleeve with you and again here just when I'm doing my stitches I want to take care to do them as neatly as possible to try and have them fit the ones that are rounded right Fake it, we're faking it, fake it till you make it. Um, I'm trying to make these look like the other stitches. Okay, here are the one and two last rows of the sleeve, and here are the one and two on the other side. Right, one, two, one, two. Um, here up in the middle of this stitch here, and I'm gonna go under the two strands of the corresponding stitches on the other side. Pull the big old tail and go back here where I came up here. I like it to kind of try to go here into a bit into the fabric in between when I go and I come up in the next stitch like so and pull it through and sometimes it will like be a bit askew and then just take care to pull it here so it's the same size on both. The both the threads are sort of equal. Like I said, I think in this bit here, it's just important to take your time, enjoy the process. It's lovely to do something handmade and do your best and do it meticulously. And now we are here at the last uh, row of the sleeve. And we can see that in the next, the next stitches here are our stitch markers that mark the sleeve. And I come up here, I go through under both strands of the corresponding stitch on the other side. Opa, and then back here under. And now I'm just gonna do, so you see here, these are the, are the first stitches here. And there's sort of like a bit here in between. So I'm gonna do a couple of stitches here. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna go under here, like so. Okay, take a look at my last stitch here, that it's in order. Swana. Okay, that was the last of the sleeve. And now we're gonna go down the side of the sweater. And that is easier, really, because there you just have nice stitches that you can go and stitch together. Mm -mm -mm. These here are a bit big here, the ones that are like uh, where we fastened our sleeve. So I am going to go here one up. I don't want to go into these because they will just leave like a big gap. So I'm going to try and go here and get another strand here. And on this side, it would be this one. As you can see, I'm just doing basically it's just do your best, you know, common sense and do your best. <laughs> the best we can do, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, uh. Oops. Got a 
a little nut there. It is getting a bit felted, my horribly gilt thread. <laughs> okay, and so now we're going to go down the sides. It is uh, good also now when you go down to the side to put in your stitch markers. So the last one will go here into the chain two here and the other one here into what have we here the second chain here okay and maybe we should just count up also I can I'm not sure I would always do it this meticulously but we are you know at least I should show you how to do that what is this this is the last stitch here no. mm -hmm. this is the last half double crochet so it'll be like here Okay, and I'm going to do the same and count up 10 stitches just to see. And if we have one extra stitch or something, then that is just something that we will fudge around the, along the way. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20. Put my stitch marker there and count 20 on this side as well. This is the last proper stitch here. Uh, I'm not counting the the chains, just the proper stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Mm -hmm. Double check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay. And then I'm going to see how much we have here left. 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 to my stitch marker here. 16 marks the stitch marker. Let's see on the other side. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 14, 15. Ah, I have 15 on this side. Hmm, missing one stitch. Let me count again. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. Okay. And this one here is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm going to see if I did it wrong here at the end then. Hmm. Yeah. I will, well, hmm. yeah, I think the answer is correct. So this is obviously done on purpose <laughs> to show you if you have one more stitch on one side, then you will just to go tw twice into one of the stitches on. So I have one more stitch on this side than this side. So I'll show you how to fudge that along the way. Easy peasy, no problem. I'm going to take out my stitch markers here because they're just going to get in the way. Okay. Oopa. Okay. And these are lining up here now. And I am going to go into from this side. I'm just going to go into the back loop here of this one and the front loop of this one. Okay. I think that gives the nice definition. Let's see how it goes. Maybe it should be... No, I think that will be good. Okay, so when we do these, we're just going to do a running stitch. And so when we do these, like so... No, I should have... Back up, sorry. I can get a bit square with these. <laughs> I was in this one here, so I'm going to go back here like so and go do it from this side, yeah. like so. And here we go. OK, so just into the stitches that are together here. So I'm leaving the third loop and the front loop here on the, this side and the third loop and the, um, the middle loop here on the other side. And now we're just going to do a running stitch like so, just from the front to the back. And do take care not to do this too tightly because then when we block it, we just want it to be in 
tone with our gauge. Okay, so always just take care that it, if you see that it's, what's this looking? Mm. I think I'm going to change it a bit and I'm going to go do it in the back loop here and both loops here. Let's see how that looks. I think that will look better. Like so. Back loop and both here. That's a bit neater. Okay, let's do it like that. So again, now we have to go twice in one of the stitches on this side because we had one less. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into the same one and into the next one on the other side. And there we have gotten rid of our one extra stitch there. Um, just shorten and just into each and every stitch. And just keep it a bit. <laughs> oh. oh no, I like it better the way I started. Okay, I'm sorry, but I can't be bothered to start over again and film it all again. Okay, let, let's go. Let's go into just the back and front loop, like I said. First thing that is always right, isn't it? Three stitches I've done here, so Whoop, take these out. Okay. And on we go. It's all in the process. I hope you forgive me. <laughs> okay. Yes, like I did. Back loop and front loop. Yes, that is better. And just take care to not do it too tight. And just have the stitches line up. I'm going to do my little fudge again because I unraveled that. So I had one last stitch here and one more here. So I'm just going to go into the same one here and into the next one on the other side. And then we have gotten rid of that extra stitch. And just always pull at it to see that it's, you know, has some, has some stretch in it. Okay, the two middle stitches like this. And now we just go all the way down the side. Easy peasy. Whoop. <laughs> that was my granny reminding me that I'm cheating. And... Then we get to our stitch marker and then they should match the stitches there. And you know, again, if you find another way to do this that looks neater, you are free to do so. This looks kind of neat. This is good, right? Yeah, I like it. You can sew them together any way you want with another technique, what have you. No problem. Okay, eight, two, three, four. Oh, you're kidding me. Now I have one more stitch on the other side. I didn't have an extra stitch. Oh dear Lord, this is going awfully. You will lose all faith in me. And now you will see that. Well, I mean, it's important to be meticulous where it matters, but I will say this. If you can fudge and it doesn't really matter, that's okay too. So I fudge now another one and now it's it's matching. <laughs> okay, two more stitches for the stitch marker. Like so. Ba -ba -ba. And always take care to try and have your Stitches even and give them a bit of a slack so that it has this stretch in it. But I mean, it was obviously very important to show you how to fudge, so I just uh, fudged uh, unnecessarily, but you know, still. <laughs> and now we know that it, well, it should match. We will see because this has been all just one big misunderstanding of counting. 
and just take care that they are lining up the stitches and go down down to the end of both rows here both pieces always taking care of the stretch and the gauge because we have this this loose gauge so we want the stitching to be in accordance to that okay so again i'm just going into the back loop here of the piece that is closer to me and the front loop of the one on the other side Always thinking about my tension. Okay, I hope this matches now. You're eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good to love. Thank God. <laughs> okay, almost there. All the way down. really like these darning needles for jobs like these. Okay, just two more stitches and then the chains. Here we go. Take out our stitch marker. And now the last stitch is here in the chains here at the end. Mm -mm -mm. I would say here and I have some extra th thread I'm going to measure it so I know on the other side how long I should use okay in the last stitch I'm just going to go again and do a little knot by going through it here like so Whoop. and there we go and I just cut here we will have to weave this in uh, let me see how much end I have. I think it's like 50 too much, but I did use like two meters, I think. If I could find my measuring tape. Uh, yeah, these are like 50 centimeters left. So yeah, two meters is what I used of the gilt thread. <laughs> okay, so let's look at how it how it looks now. So now we have sewed together the side here. It looks great to do it like this, right? Then you have these two lines here. So yeah, this was the way to go, to go into the back loop here and front loop here. So it looks very consistent with the rest of the fabric. And here is the top of the sleeve. And this is the front. So now what you do is just to do exactly the same on the other side. You go to the other side of the, the first sleeve Mm -mm -mm. and here is the the cuff here and so you just fasten your yarn here in the right corner and do the cuffing and then sew together the other side exactly the way we did it on on this one that i showed you uh, if you're left-handed then you fasten it in the left corner if right-handed in the right corner uh yeah so that's it um i will have showed you how it looks all in the in the intro so you just go forth and conquer and uh, sew this together. And then next up for part, what was this? This was part six. So part seven is going to be the front panel, front side panels. Okay, so have fun with the joining and all the meticulous slash guilty um, finishing touches. And I am very happy with how this turned out. The video could have been better, but really the joining is all just very nice and neat. And I will be going out wearing my Wupa sweater, flapping my arms around with no, no sort of sense of, uh, of uh, shame of how this uh, <laughs> finishing is, right? Flapping on. Let's go. This was great. See you tomorrow with part seven. Ciao, ciao.